Creating content for YouTube has been the hardest, yet the most rewarding thing I have ever done in my life. That is quite the opening statement, but for what it's worth, I really do not know where this story is going. It's not like I'm a successful YouTuber, then again, those that cannot do, teach, or however the saying goes. Oh, I do hate the term YouTuber though, and influencer for that matter. I consider myself just a content creator with a bit of a journalistic background and training. Though, I am getting a bit ahead of myself. I don't know what this material is supposed to represent. Is it a lecture? Is it a straight out manual or a how to video with precise instructions on how to build your own social media empire? Probably not, though I will be touching some of those points. More likely, I see this effort of mine as an attempt at exploring new creative ways while trying to expand my work and define this fascinating environment that is YouTube. Leaving all modesty aside, just think of me as a modern Mark Twain imitator whose ambiguous stories are anchored in folk tales, mythology and are wide open to interpretation, all in a contemporary setup. So without any further ado, let's get to the business at hand, mainly how I reached the conclusion to start my own YouTube channel. I have always been a somewhat intelligent, curious and creative person, though a very lazy one at that, and that is a whole other point I don't wish to expand on today, but as I am sitting here now, I have a bit of an issue concentrating to finish the script. Working in a structured, well-paid and respected environment is all well and good, but where do our dreams stand at the end of the day? This has been the main drive that made me think of YouTube. I mean, I am a journalist major after all, and I have always been an avid YouTube consumer, almost since the platform's very own inception. So the logical step would be to just plunge directly into the unknown and start creating my own content. By now I can tell you that a few things were clear since the beginning. Even though my biggest passion is the automotive scene and my second one is the English language, not a native speaker if you haven't figured that out by now, I knew that whatever the theme of my first channel ended up being, it would be just a vehicle for my thoughts and ideas to poke through, not the whole journey and certainly not the final destination. And I don't mean that in the fatalistic meaning, but rather what this experience will end up being. I had a few ideas in my mind and I can tell you from the start that I chose an automotive theme for my channel that ended up nearly ruining my energy and enthusiasm supplies, a topic which deserves its own episode but which I will not get into at the present moment. The best explanation to getting down to content creation can be summed up in one simple word – organic. It's been a natural course of thought that has led me to this path, and characteristically, I might add, since I am a very stubborn and volcanic personality beneath my introverted demeanor. One day I just picked up an old camera and started recording. Look, I know it was a precursor of things to come, it almost felt futile since the quality of the footage and the quality of my delivery were both lacking sorely, but bravely I soldiered on with a time plan filled with milestones and trainings as best as I could define them. I started work just after the first year of the pandemic ended and I would be lying if I said that the isolation and lack of activity had nothing to do with it. After four years of working in a structured environment, I had found myself without work indefinitely, so something had to be done. I had known YouTube was to be a long shot, but then again, what isn't? Four years in, I can attest I had no clue as to how long this shot would be. Have I reached any discernible goal? Not in the slightest. But do I regret doing it? 
none of my life. Or it might as well just be the fact that I am into cars way too much. I mean, I made car noises, drew cars and recognized car brands on the street before I could even speak my native tongue correctly, which is not saying little since I had been a precocious child with a particularly clear diction and penchant for elaborate words and expressions. Once I grew up, I had always prided myself with my drawing abilities, consoling myself with the fact that I would end up being a car designer, that somehow this was my destiny. Of course, I hadn't put in the work, nor did I ever have the chance, since in post-communist Romania of the 1990s there was little in the way of artistic automotive training to be had. So there, I admit it, I am from Romania, keep that in mind, or not. At any rate, once I had turned 30 and confined myself to a life of comfortable anonymity, almost amnesic I might add, I figured YouTube would be a silver lining of sorts, a way of fulfilling my destiny even at a lower tier. Mind you, I had also been a journalist graduate, so it had a ring of coming full circle of sorts since I had botched that career as well. It all made sense somehow, or it was a typical case of unfulfillment and a looming midlife crisis. My YouTube debut, my triumphant, all-conquering videos going viral, a diamond in the rough from an emerging European country, broadening my spectrum and public possibly launching other talents into the business. Yes, I know, I'm a very modest and down-to-earth guy. And I ate it all up, all to the point that I became depressed when, after several years of effort and hundreds of hours of work, I had nothing to show for. Thus, back to the drawing board I went. Don't change the approach, but instead switch the vehicle. After all, I was still the native storyteller I had always been, just the work for an automotive channel was too much, too many variables, too much time needed, not enough experience. So I figured, what do I like to do and analyze besides cars? Well, tech of course, mainly old tech. More specifically, useless obsolete gadgets like the ones shown on this channel. So I did a few episodes, a sort of a review through rose-tinted lens, and I had moderate feedback which showed potential. But again, I hit that wall. Besides low production values and low quality sets, I was missing film subjects, interesting gadgets that had potential. Or rather, I bought a bunch of tech that was so obscure and rare that even the YouTube audience did not find interesting. There is also the popular approach, spends lots of money on modern gadgets which gather interest but burn a hole in one's pocket. That isn't an option though and not necessarily for the obvious cost impediment. Competing with well-established channels which get first look on high-end gadgetry will yield no result in the algorithm, bringing me back to square one. Case in point, my Galaxy S24 Ultra clip has generated a whopping 29 views in two weeks. So I guess I'm stuck again. It was time for another strategy shift. But let's get back in time a bit, to the beginning of my efforts when a YouTube channel was but a fever dream and I had no idea how to even proceed with setting up a plan and drawing up milestones for the project. I used all of my training and knowledge received in my day job at an automotive plant in order to draw up a rigorous plan that followed quite a few key points. Language, studio training, editing capabilities. And mind you, these included reading, audio training, watching other people train for speech and diction, studying about lighting and studio setup, and all the while keeping the budget at a minimum. You must understand that by this point I had already spent about 2000 euros on a camera and recording equipment, money that as of today I have yet to amortize or recover. That is another way of saying I haven't earned a single cent from my YouTube endeavors. 
And I suppose it's a good time to beg and grovel like a hungry dog and ask you nicely to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button as I am in desperate need of views and subscribers. You see, it's not really about living the dream and becoming an influencer. Well, yeah, of course it is, and most who say otherwise are lying through their teeth. But it's more than that, there are subtle nuances. If I get to a point with my channel, whether it makes money for me or not is absolutely irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. If I get to that point, then all this work, passion, effort and sacrifice has not been in vain. It really means I did something with my life. I, the failed journalist, the unassuming, introverted, square in the corner cubicle, that's what it's all about. Not the fame, not the earnings, not the social status. None of that matters if, in the next few years, I get to truly connect with some of my viewers. There is a lot of potential for growth in my channel, but that growth has to be organic, natural, progressive. Sadly, I have yet to see a notable result. I am back at the levels of 2022 in terms of visitors and hours viewed. Don't get me started on subscribers. I guess that by now I have either made you curious or lost your interest altogether. Not a huge loss since my message is neither bold nor clear. But still, I have hopes to make a splash in this business, and my ultimate goal is even more far-fetched and fevered than one might imagine, but I will get to that in due time. For now, though, I can talk about the future in a more general sense. The hardest thing I can see right now is getting time for proper video development. I mean, it might not look it, but I am writing crude scripts for my videos in my spare time while holding a job, maintaining three cars and renovating a house. Yeah, of course, such first world problems to have are good, but I do strongly believe in exiting the rat race while simultaneously maintaining that the very same rat race is important for character building and self-discipline. I guess that's a classic catch-22. You can't have the spoils of war without the battle, but there is a good chance that you might die during the fight. So. All that is left to do is to give them hell, which I intend to do over the course of the following videos, as I will be touching some sensitive but important aspects of modern life, all while maintaining a strong bond to my perspective as a trained but failed journalist. Would I call these efforts a blog? No. Is this an intro to a podcast? Most likely not. Is it a genuine therapeutic way of dealing with one's issues? Possibly, but not likely. However, it is a way to discover one's self-identity, and with that, I sincerely hope you will join me in my efforts. Who knows, you might just learn a thing or two in the process. So, until next time.